Ladies, gentlemen, nor variations there apart, and especially the ladies. I have a very special build today. Today I'm going to be recreating something that happened in a very particular moment in history. Well, it's, I say a moment, it was quite a long stretch. This is going to be a commemoration of um, the suffragettes specifically, but more broadly the women's rights movement and uh, women's struggles in trying to get the right to vote. Now whilst the suffragettes are the main body that comes to mind when you think about the struggle for women's rights, or at least it is for me, but there were other groups who were trying to advocate for women's rights and as a whole all those groups were known as suffragists, uh, women who were trying to get votes for women, not women and men. At a certain point though when they were trying to get things done through the proper channels, through um, petitioning government and advocating and things like that, they weren't getting anywhere so certain groups of them broke off and formed a different sort of uh, a women's rights movement, a more violent and extremist group. Um, now the suffragists had always been dismissively referred to as suffragettes as sort of a you know a, a dismissive term but these uh, rebellious ones they took it on as their name and they became suffragettes uh, and they were quite extreme and they even tried to assassinate the Prime Minister a couple of times. But it wasn't all about breaking windows and fire bombings and trying to assassinate Prime Ministers. There were quite a few acts of rebellion that we can recreate today safely and legally. One of which was um, the defacement of currency. What I have here are some King Edward VII pennies. Now these pennies are fantastic, you don't make pennies like these anymore, this is just before the gold standard was abolished, so these are actually made of bronze and they're actually pennies weight of bronze and they make quite a satisfying clink, you don't get that with modern coins. But anyway, it was apparently the anarchists that did this first, they began defacing currency with uh, Viva la Anarchy, as in like long live anarchy. And as this became an established means of protest that the anarchists were doing, the uh, suffragettes decided to sort of co-opt it into their own way of getting their message out. And so they began stamping these pennies with the slogan, Votes for Women. And the reason they stamped them on pennies is because if you were to do it on a more valuable coin, a gold coin perhaps, then uh, there's more of an incentive for the Bank of England to melt it down and remint it so that it gets out of circulation quickly. But with these little bronze coins, the cost of doing that would be prohibitive, just getting them out of circulation. So they, in theory, would circulate a lot wider. They didn't actually get circulated that much because people refused to accept them as currency when they had the slogan written on. So it's hard to get them back into circulation once they'd been defaced. And you can't really blame people for not wanting to accept it because other people weren't accepting it. So even if you supported uh, women's rights and the women's right to vote, uh, you probably wouldn't accept it because then you've got to try and spend it and you're basically just you know giving something away for free because you can't spend the coin afterwards. Now in more recent history there has been a video put up on YouTube by the British Museum that shows one of the original uh, pennies that had been defaced that they have in their collection and the curator who's um, talking about it just going to discussion about the how the coin came to be. Now one of the things that he says in that video, one of the things he points out is that on these coins, they're all struck with the slogan on the king's head, never the reverse. The reverse shows Britannia. Now Britannia is a symbol of Britain. You've got a long complicated history, first introduced by the Romans uh, and used as a means of propaganda for saying the subjugation of Britain has happened. And the first image of Britannia is her being forcefully subdued by the Emperor Claudius. But she became a symbol for Britain during the days of empire. She's still on her 50 pences which is here on the penny, and because it was a woman who had originally been um, subjugated, they didn't really want to mark the Britannia side, so they always marked the king's head because he's a bloke. The only time that the head side wasn't marked was on the one example that we know of where it's a Queen Victoria coin, and rather than putting the slogan on Queen Victoria's head, then they did put it on the tails because Queen Victoria is a woman. So what am I going to do with these coins today? What I intend to do is to take these coins, these uh, genuine King Edward VII pennies, and stamp that same slogan that they did, votes for women, on the front of it. Now if you're getting all ready to type on your keyboards, I'm defacing historic coins here, well these aren't actually that old, they're only just outside of living memory, 
and at the end of the day they're just little pieces of bronze they're not even that expensive you can pick one of these up for like two quid there's still quite a lot of them in circulation so i'm not destroying a national treasure here they're just um old coins so what i'm going to do exactly like they did i'm going to take these little punches that have uh, letters on them it, jewelers would use to um, mark on pieces of metal so if you had a piece of jewelry you wanted to have a name put on there this is a quick easy way of doing it a cheaper way rather than doing it finally engraving with lots of little strikes you do it just one big thing and dunk so these would have been readily available back then as well take a coin and then take a hammer and before i do just to delay it a little bit longer I did trace my family history a few years back and found that my great grandmother on my mum's dad's side, to my mum's dad's mum, um, she would have been just the right age to be in that first cohort of women that got the right to vote in 1918. So, um, yeah, it's a good little family connection. So, as I'm doing this, doing this for my great nan, just to kind of get in the mindset and feel that act of rebellion of the suffragettes all those years ago. One, we mean the right to vote. And in doing so, gave civil rights to a large swathe of people. Paved the way for others. And there we have it. I've done several of the coins and I've also put a B on the back, my first initial, just so they can be distinguished from the originals. Although I think you could probably distinguish them from the originals by the fact that my um, lettering hasn't gone as deep because I've got cheap modern uh, embossers rather than the heavy duty ones I would have had back then. But these, these ones are less likely to explode when I hit them with something that's uh, metal. So that's the replication part done and what I learned from doing that is firstly that's very loud there's no way you're doing that in secret but also that was pretty hard work it's quite a lot of effort to constantly hammer them and it took quite a while to hammer that you can't get one strike and do a letter I mean my letters haven't gone in that deep and I hit them quite a few times it's also very difficult to line things up correctly so it takes quite a lot of skill it takes quite a lot of effort and Considering that most people weren't accepting these coins, I don't think it probably would have been a very successful form of protest. So if you're thinking of putting Black Lives Matter or reproductive rights or, or, or uh, fight climate change or something like that on a modern coin, it's uh, probably not worth the effort, to be honest. Now that they're done, I'm going to move on to the next step. And the next step is to try and turn these into jewellery for the women in my family. This isn't going to be something I'm going to sell. People do on Etsy anyway, and it'd be a lot cheaper just to press that into some uh, clay and then cast some metal in that shape, constantly turn them out like that. It'd be a lot cheaper than buying these and defacing them the way I just did. But if you're looking for a bit of um, historical reenactment, as I just did, then uh, you know you can pick these up fairly cheaply. Not that I'm encouraging you to deface the king's face, of course. But now that that's done, as I was saying, I'm going to turn them into jewellery. So to do that, I'm going to have to drill a hole in them. I'm going to make I'm supposed to be making four pieces of jewellery, but I forgot to order a extra chain for myself. So I'm going to be making three pieces and then waiting for another chain to come in order to make myself one. So two necklaces are going to be made and a charm bracelet. Charm bracelet is going to go for my niece. She's not going to have it yet because she's at the stage where she puts everything in her mouth. And I don't really want to give her something like this. So first stage is going to be to drill through a hole. And the necklaces are fairly thin that I've got, the chains that I've got. Uh, but the charm bracelet is uh, quite a lot wider, so I'm going to have to do a different size drill. And the way you drill through is firstly, you've got to make an indentation where you want to drill. And I'm going to do that by taking something sharp. I'm not certain this is going to work, but I'm going to try it anyway. Taking something sharp and putting shin down with quite a lot of pressure on the point that I want the hole to drill through. The idea being that this will create a divot that the drill bit will sit in and stop it skidding around on the surface. 
which seems to have worked. This bronze is fairly soft. And as I'm going to be drilling into metal, what I'm going to want to do is use a drill bit that has been coated in titanium. You'll know those ones because they've got the sort of goldy bronze look on the outside and I'll just allow it to get slightly hotter before it starts to weaken and deform which means uh, you can go a little bit better through metal. Uh, also going to, although it's not strictly necessary from using a titanium drill bit, I'm going to put a little bit of oil on there just to allow it to uh, drill a lot easier without overheating. Now while it may be tempting just to thread the necklace through there and call it good, there are a few things I need to do before that. Firstly, I just need to file down the inside of this to make sure that there's no sharp edges that are going to like, catch on clothing or cut someone or something like that. And secondly, the chains that I have are silver. And if I were to place a silver chain through here against the bronze, eventually the bronze being a harder metal than silver, it will eventually wear through the silver and damage the necklace causing it to more likely snap. Of course that's if it has excessive wear which I doubt these will be worn excessively, they're more novelty things than anything. So in order to prevent the wear on the chain what I'm going to have to do is put some sort of barrier between the bronze and the silver and I'm going to do that simply with some hot glue. Just taking a very small amount of hot glue and putting it along the inner edge of the bronze. The idea being that the chain will rest against the hot glue and there will be more of a barrier to prevent this silver rubbing against the bronze. And once that's all done, obviously I'm still filing, I haven't done it yet, I'm talking in advance. Magic of editing. But once it is all done, then the next thing I need to consider is whether or not this is going to turn skin green. Because bronze, or copper specifically, will turn skin green if you have it against your skin for a long period of time. It reacts with the sweat and oils in the skin and causes a greening effect. Obviously that's not really desirable so I need to create some sort of barrier between the bronze and the skin. And to do that I'm just going to take some ordinary glass, the sort that you might put on the outside of pottery that you've made at home in order to make it waterproof. Although you could actually probably just use a clear nail polish as well, it will have the exact same effect. And just coat the outside of this just so that it creates a barrier between the bronze and the skin when it's worn. Then after threading through the chain, you're done. And so there we have it, some jewellery to celebrate, the suffragettes. Now, obviously the original and main purpose of this was not to create jewellery, it was to get into the mindset and understand what it was like for the suffragettes to some small degree. And I think what I did learn from doing this was based on the amount of noise that it created whilst making the coins, you can guarantee that there was at least local support for the suffragettes in doing this because any of the neighbours would have heard that and would just be able to say to the police they're defacing currency in there and they would have been arrested. Suffragettes were arrested but in order to make enough of these to make an impact on the uh, coinage and to have examples of it extant would suggest that people were just letting them do this even though it was probably very annoying to hit, listen to them sitting in the room going tink 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 or actually it's more thwack 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 anyway that's the jewellery I'm going to present this to the women of my family tomorrow not going to film that but uh, trust me I will and that's all we have for today but if you click this video up here then you can watch another video that the algorithm has picked out just for you or if you click this little cartoon head down here you can subscribe to the channel and be sure to be updated on any future videos where I deface the currency Diogenes would be proud.